Board game. Thumb upright equals 1.35. The board game Monopoly is licensed in 103 countries and printed in 37 languages. Thumb upright equals 1.35. Young girls playing a board game in the Ears Army, Finland, library in 2016. Board games are tabletop games that typically use. These pieces are moved or placed on a pre-marked board playing surface and often include elements of table, card, role playing and miniatures games as well. Many board games feature competition between two or more players. To show a few examples, in Checkers British English name drafts, a player wins by capturing all the posing pieces, while Euro games often end with a calculation of final scores. Pandemic is a cooperative game where players all win or lose as a team and pick solitaire as a puzzle for one person. There are many varieties of board games. The representation of real-life situations can range from having no inherent theme, such as checkers, to having a specific theme and narrative, such as Cluedo. Rules can range from the very simple, such as in Snakes and Ladders, to deeply complex, as an advanced squad leader. Play components now often include custom figures or shape counters, and distinctively shaped player pieces commonly known as as well as traditional cards and dice. The time required to learn or master varies greatly from game to game, but is not necessarily related to the number or complexity of rules. For example, chess or go possess relatively simple, but have great strategic depth. Ancient. Classical board games are divided into four categories. Brace games such as Pachisi, space games such as Knots and Crosses, chess games such as H. Nefetafel, and games of displacement such as chess. Board games have been played, travelled, and evolved in most cultures and societies throughout history. Several important historical sites, artefacts, and documents shed light on early board games such as Jiroff Civilization game boards in Iran. Senate, found in Pradinastic and First Dynasty burials of Egypt c. 3500 BC and 3100 BC respectively is the oldest board game known to have existed. Senate was pictured in a fresco painting Farron in Merkner's tomb 3,32700 BC. Also from Pradinastic Egypt is Mehen. Hounds and Jackals, another ancient Egyptian board game, appeared around 2000 BC. The first complete set of this game was discovered from a Theban tomb that dates to the 13th dynasty. This game was also popular in Mesopotamia and the Caucasus. Agamemnon originated in ancient Mesopotamia about 5,000 years ago. Astapada, Chess, Pachisi and Chopra originated in India. Go and Liuba originated in China. Hatali originated in Mesoamerica played by the ancient Aztecs and the royal game of Ur was found in the royal tombs of Ur, dating to Mesopotamia 4,600 years ago. The earliest known games list is the Buddha games list. Thal Melo de Grab Kamad de Nefetari 3, JPG Senate, one of the oldest known board games file, Aim of Hands and Jackals, METD Pete 164105, JPG Hands and Jackals, Egypt, 13th Dynasty file, men playing board games, JPG men playing board games, from the Sagantic Perineo manuscript file, British Museum Royal Game of Air, JPG Royal Game of Air, Southern Iraq, about 2600 minus 2000. 400 BC file, Makhilxichidil Patali, PNG, Patali game being watched by Makhilxichidil as depicted on page 48 of the Codex Magliabgiano, file, Met, Earthenware figures playing Liubur, Han Dynasty. JPG 2 models are two men playing a game of Liubur, Han Dynasty file, pottery game players. JPG Han Dynasty glazed pottery tomb figurines playing Liubur, with six sticks laid out to the side of the game board. European Board games have a long tradition in Europe. The oldest records of board gaming in Europe date back to Homer's Iliad written in the 8th century BC, in which she mentions the ancient Greek game of Petir. This game of Petir would later evolve into the Roman Ludus Latrunculorum. Board gaming in ancient Europe was not unique to the Greek or Roman world, with records estimating that the ancient Norse game of H. Nefetafel was developed sometime before 400 AD. In ancient Ireland, the game of Fidchel or Fischiel is said to date back to at least 144 AD, though this is likely an anachronism. A Fidchel board dating from the 10th century has been uncovered in company. Westmeath, Ireland. The association of dice and cards with gambling led to all dice games except backgammon being treated as lotteries by dice in the gaming acts of 1710 and 1845. Early board game producers in the second half of the 18th century were mapmakers. The global popularization of board games, with special themes and branding, coincided with the formation of the global dominance of the British Empire. 
John Wallace was an English board game publisher, bookseller, map slash chart seller, printler, music seller, and photographer. With his sons John Wallace Jr. and Edward Wallace, he was one of the most prolific publishers of board games of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. John Betts' a tour of the British colonies and foreign possessions and William Spooner's A Voyage of Discovery were popular in the British Empire. It is a genre of wargaming developed in 19th century Prussia to teach battle tactics to officers. File Attic Black Figure Neck Arm for Achilles and Ajax playing a board game overseen by Athena. JPG Achilles and Ajax playing a board game overseen by Athena. Attic Black Figure Neck Arm for Car. 510 BC File German Box for Board Games Walter 7193 Bottom. JPG Box for Board Games C. 15th Century. Walder's Art Museum File, Gaming Table with Chessboard, JPG and Early Games Table, Desk, Germany, 1735, featuring chess slash drafts left in nine men's Morris Red File, Game of Skittles, copy of painting by Piet de Hooch, Cincinnati Art Museum, JPG Game of Skittles, copy of 1660-68, painting by Piet de Hooch in the St. Louis Art Museum, American. In 17th and 18th century colonial America, the agrarian life of the country left little time for game playing, although drafts, checkers, bowling, and card games were not unknown. The Pilgrims and Puritans of New England frowned on game playing, and they often viewed dice as instruments of the devil. When Governor William Bradford discovered a group of non Puritans playing stool ball, pitching the bar, and pursuing other sports in the streets on Christmas Day, 1622, he confiscated their implements reprimanded them, and told them their devotion for the day should be confined to their homes. In Thoughts on Lotteries 1826, Thomas Jefferson wrote, Almost all these pursuits of chance produce something useful to society. But there are some which produce nothing, and endanger the well-being of the individuals engaged in them or of others depending on them. Such show games with cards, dice, billiards, and so on, and although the pursuit of them is a matter of natural right, yet society, perceiving the irresistible bent of some of its members to pursue them, and the ruin produced by them to the families depending on these individuals, consider it as a case of insanity, quote Hawk, step in to protect the family and the party himself, as in other cases of insanity, infancy, imbecility, etc., and suppress the pursuit altogether, and the natural right of following it. There are some other games of chance, useful on certain occasions, and injurious only when carried beyond their useful bounds. Such are insurances, lotteries, raffles, and so on these they do not suppress, but take their regulation under their own discretion. The board game Travelers Tour through the United States and its sister game Travelers Tour through Europe were published by New York City bookseller Fahrenheit. And R. Lockwood in 1822 and claimed the distinction of being the first board games published in the United States. As the U.S. shifted from agrarian to urban living in the 19th century, greater leisure time and a rise in income became available to the middle class. The American home, once the center of economic production, became the locus of entertainment, enlightenment and education under mother supervision. Children were encouraged to play board games that developed literacy skills and provided moral instruction. The earliest board games published in the United States were based on Christian morality. The Mansion of Happiness, 1843, for example, sent players along a path of virtues and vices that led to the Mansion of Happiness Heaven. The Game of Pope and Pagan, or the Siege of the Stronghold of Satan by the Christian Army, 1844, petted an image on its board of Hindu women committing sati against missionaries landing on a foreign shore. The missionaries are cast in white as the symbol of innocence, temperance, and hope while the Pope and Pagan are cast in black, the color of gloom of error and grief at the daily loss of empire. Commercially produced board games in the mid-19th century were monochrome prints laboriously hand-coloured by teams of low-paid young factory women. Advances in papermaking and printmaking during the period enabled the commercial production of relatively inexpensive board games. The most significant advance was the development of chrome lithography, a technological achievement that made bold, richly coloured images available at affordable prices. Games cost as little as US 25 cents for a small box card game to $3 for more elaborate games. American Protestants believed a virtuous life led to success, but the belief was challenged mid-century when the country embraced materialism and capitalism. In 1860, the checkered game of life rewarded players for mundane activities such as attending college, marrying and getting rich. Daily life rather than eternal life became the focus of board games.
The game was the first to focus on secular virtues rather than religious virtues, and sold 40,000 copies in its first year. Game of the District Message by, or Merit Rewarded, published in 1886 by the New York City firm of McLaughlin Brothers, was one of the first board games based on materialism and capitalism published in the United States. The game is a typical roll and move track board game. Players move their tokens along the track at the spin of the arrow toward the goal at the track's end. Some spaces on the track will advance the player while others will send him back. In the affluent 1880s, Americans witnessed the publication of Valdres Gregg's to Riches games that permitted players to emulate the capitalist heroes of the age. One of the first such games, the game of the district messenger boy, encouraged the idea that the lawless messenger boy could ascend the corporate ladder to its topless rung. Such games insinuated that the accumulation of wealth brought increased social status. Competitive capitalistic games culminated in 1935 with Monopoly, the most commercially successful board game in U.S. history. McLaughlin Brothers published similar games based on the Telegraph Boy theme including Game of the Telegraph Boy, or Merit Rewarded 1888. Greg Downey notes in his essay, Information Networks and Urban Spaces, the case of the Telegraph Messenger Boy, that families who could afford the deluxe version of the game in its chrome lithographed, the wood-sided box would not have sent their sons out for such a rough apprenticeship in the working world. Margaret Hofer described the period of the 1880s-1920s as the golden age of board gaming in America. Board game popularity was boosted, like that of many items through mass production, which made them cheaper and more easily available. Although there are no detailed statistics, some scholars suggest that the 20th century saw a decline in the popularity of the hobby. Chinese, Arabic, and Indian. Outside of Europe and the US, many traditional board games are popular. In China, Go and many variations of chess are popular. In Africa and the Middle East, Mancala is a popular board game archetype with many regional variations. In India, a community game called Karam is popular. Modern. Thermopride equals 1.4 the number of board games published by year 1944-2017, as listed on Board Game Geek. Expansion sets for existing games are marked in orange. The late 1990s onwards have seen substantial growth in the reach and market of board games. This has been attributed to, among other factors, the internet, which has made it easier for people to find out about games and to find opponents to play against, as well as with a general increase in leisure time and consumer spending on entertainment. Around the year 2000, the board gaming industry began significant growth with companies producing a rising number of new games to be sold to a growing worldwide audience. In the 2010s, several publications referred to board games as having a new golden age, though some board gamers prefer to call it a renaissance, as the golden age is both predefined and a common term. Board game venues are also growing in popularity. In 2016, over 5,000 board game cafes opened in the US alone. Board game cafes are also reported to be very popular in China. Board games have also been used as a mechanism for science communication. Lack strategy and diplomacy. Some games, such as chess, depend completely on player skill, while many children's games, such as Candy Land and Snakes and Ladders, require no decisions by the players and are decided purely by luck. Many games require some level of both skill and luck. A player may be hampered by bad luck in backgammon, monopoly, or risk, but over many games, a skilled player will win more often. The elements of luck can also make for more excitement at times, and allow for more diverse and multifaceted strategies, as concepts such as expected value and risk management must be considered. Luck may be introduced into a game by several methods. The use of dice of various sorts goes back to the earliest board games. These can decide everything from how many steps a player moves their token as in Monopoly to how their forces fare in battle, as in Risk, or which resources a player gains, as in Cadden. Other games such as Sorry use a deck of special cards that, when shuffle, create randomness. Scrabble does something similar with randomly picked letters. Other games use spinners, timers of random length, or other sources of randomness. German-style board games are notable for often having fewer elements of luck than many North American board games. Another important aspect of some games is diplomacy, that is, players, making deals with one another. Negotiation generally features only in games with three or more players, cooperative games being the exception. An important facet of Cadden, for example, is convincing players to trade with you rather than with opponents. In Risk, two or more players may team up against others. 
Easy diplomacy involves convincing other players that someone else is winning and should therefore be teamed up against. Advanced diplomacy, e.g., in the aptly named game diplomacy consists of making elaborate plans together with the possibility of betrayal. In perfect information games, such as chess, each player has complete information on the state of the game, but in other games, such as Tigris and Euphrates or Stratego, some information is hidden from players. This makes finding the best move more difficult and may involve estimating probabilities by the opponents. Software Many board games are now available as video games. These are aptly termed digital board games, and their distinguishing characteristic compared to traditional board games is they can now be played online against a computer or other players. Some websites such as BoardGamer.com, Ucarta, etc. allow play in real time and immediately show the opponent's moves, while others use email to notify the players after each move. The internet and cheaper home printing has also influenced board games via print and play games that may be purchased and printed. Some games use external media such as audio cassettes or DVD in accompaniment to the game. There are also virtual tabletop programs that allow online players to play a variety of existing and new board games through tools needed to manipulate the game board but do not necessarily enforce the game's rules, leaving this up to the players. There are generalized programs such as Vassal, Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia that can be used to play any board or card game while programs like Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds that are more specialized for role-playing games. Some of these virtual tabletops have worked with the license holders to allow for use of their game's assets within the program, for example, Fantasy Grounds as licenses for both Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder materials, while Tabletop Simulator allows game publishers to provide paid downloadable content for their games. However, as these games offer the ability to add in the content through user modifications, there are also unlicensed uses of board game assets available through these programs. Market While the board gaming market is estimated to be smaller than that for video games, it has also experienced significant growth from the late 1990s. A 2012 article in The Guardian described board games as making a comeback. Other expert sources suggest that board games never went away and that board games have remained a popular leisure activity which has only grown over time. Another from 2014 gave an estimate that put the growth of the board game market at between 25% and 40% annually since 2010 and described the current time as the golden era for board games. The rise in board game popularity has been attributed to quality improvement more elegant mechanics artwork, and graphics as well as increased availability thanks to sales through the internet. Crowdsourcing for board games is a large facet of the market, with $233 million raised on Kickstarter in 2020. A 1991 estimate for the global board game market was over $1.02 billion. A 2001 estimate for the United States board games and puzzle market gave a value of under $400 million, and for United Kingdom, of about £50 sterling million. A 2009 estimate for the Korean market was both at 800 million won and another estimate for the American board game market for the same year was at about 800 dollars million. A 2011 estimate for the Chinese board game market was at over 10 billion yuan. Some estimates may split board games from collectible card, miniature and role-playing games, for example another 2014 estimate distinguishing board games from other types of hobby games gave the estimate for the US and Canada market at only $75 million, with the total size of what it defined as the hobby game market at over $700 million, with a 2015 estimate suggesting a value of almost $900 million. A 2013 estimate put the size of the German toy market at 2.7 billion euros out of which the board games and puzzle market is worth about 375 million euros and Polish markets at 2 billion and 280 million zlotys, respectively. The capita in 2009 Germany was considered to be the best market with the highest number of games sold per individual. Research A dedicated field of research into gaming exists, known as Game Studies or Ludology. While there has been a fair amount of scientific research on the psychology of older board games e.g. Chess, Go, Mancala, less has been done on contemporary board games such as Monopoly, Scrabble and Risk, and especially modern board games such as Cadden, Agricola and Pandemic. Much research has been carried out on chess, partly because many tournament players are publicly ranked in national and international lists, which makes it possible to compare their levels of expertise. The works of Adrian de Groot, William Chiss, Herbert Simon, and Fernand Cobbett have established that knowledge, 
more than the ability to anticipate moves, plays an essential role in chess playing. Thinly arranged board games have improved children's spatial numerical understanding. This is because the game is similar to a number line in that they promote a linear understanding of numbers rather than the innate logarithmic one. Research studies show that board games such as snakes and ladders result in children showing significant improvements in aspects of basic number skills such as counting, recognizing numbers, numerical estimation, and number comprehension. They also practice fine motor skills each time they grasp a game piece. Playing board games has also been tied to improving children's executive functions and help reduce risks of dementia for the elderly. Related to this is a growing academic interest in the topic of game accessibility, culminating in the development of guidelines for assessing the accessibility of modern tabletop games and the extent to which they are playable for people with disabilities. Additionally, board games can be therapeutic. Bruce Halbany, a games inventor, said when interviewed about his game, The Great Train Robbery, with crime you deal with every basic human emotion and also have enough elements to combine action with melodrama. The player's imagination is fired as they plan to rob the train. Because of the gamble, they take in the early stage of the game there is a build-up of tension, which is immediately released once the train is robbed. The release of tension is therapeutic and useful in our society because most jobs are boring and repetitive. Playing games has been suggested as a viable addition to the traditional educational curriculum if the content is appropriate and the gameplay informs students and the curriculum content. Categories there are several ways in which board games can be classified, and considerable overlap may exist so that a game belongs to several categories. H.J.R. Murray's A History of Board Games Other Than Chess 1952 has been called the first attempt to develop a scheme for the classification of board games. David Pollitt's Oxford History of Board Games 1999 defines four primary categories, race games where the goal is to be the first to move all one's pieces to the final destination, space games in which the object is to arrange the pieces into some special configuration, chess games asymmetrical games, where players start the game with different sets of pieces and objectives and displace games where the main objective is the capture of the opponent's pieces. Pollitt also distinguishes between abstract and thematic games, the latter having a specific theme or frame narrative X, regular chess versus, for example, Star Wars themed chess. The following is a list of some of the most common game categories abstract strategy games e.g. chess, checkers, go, reverse, taffle games, or modern games such as Abaloan, Damio, Stratiker, Hive, or Jip alignment games e.g. Renju, Gamma Q, Kinexix. Nine Men's Morris, or Tic Tac Toe Auction Games e.g. Hardy Toddy, Power Grid Chess Variants Traditional Variants e.g. Shogi, Sayanki, or Jangi, Modern Variants e.g. Chess 960 Grand Chess, Hexagonal Chess, or Alice Chess Configuration Games e.g. Lines of Action, Hexad, or Entropy Connection Games e.g. Twix T, Hex, or Have and a Cooperative Games e.g. Max the Cat Caves and Claws, or Pandemic Count and Capture Games e.g. Mancala Games Cross and Circle Games e.g. Yacht, Ludo, or Aggravation Deduction Games e.g. Mastermind or Black Box Dexterity Games e.g. Tumbin Dice or Pitch Card Economic Simulation Games e.g. The Business Game, Monopoly, The Game of Life. Power Grid or Food Chain Magnet Educational Games e.g. Arthur Saves the Planet, K. Potter and the Society of Architects or Shakespeare The Bard Game Elimination Games e.g. Drafts or Quirk, Fenerona, Ate or Sarah Carter Family Games e.g. Roll Through the Ages, Birds on a Wire or For Sale Fantasy Games e.g. Shadows over Camelot German Style Board Games or Euro Games e.g. Catan, Carcassonne, Decade of the Game, Carson City, or Puerto Rico Guessing Games e.g. Pictionary or Battleship Hidden Movement Games e.g. Clue or Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space Hidden Role Games e.g. Mafia or the Resistance Historical Simulation Games e.g. Through the Ages or Railways of the World Horror Games e.g. Arkham Horror Lodge Multiplayer Games e.g. Take It Easy or SWAT 2010 Learning Slash Communication Non-Competitive Games e.g. The End Aim 1972 Mancala Games e.g. Wary Oer or the Glass Bead Game Multiplayer Games e.g. Risk Monopoly or Four Player Chess Musical Games e.g. Spontaneous Negotiation Games e.g. Diplomacy Paper and Pencil Games e.g. Tic Tac Toe or Dots and Boxes Physical Skull Games e.g. Camp Grand Auto Position Games No Captures Win by Leaving the Opponent Unable to Move e.g. Conane Mutor or the L Game Race Games e.g. Patches e. 
backgammon, snakes and ladders, hyena chase, alt worm up role playing games e.g. Dungeons and Dragons role and move games e.g. Monopoly or life running fight games e.g. Ball share buying games games in which players buy stakes in each other's positions typically longer economic management games e.g. Acquire or Panamax single player puzzle games e.g. Pig solid hair or Sudoku spiritual development games games with no winners or losers e.g. Transformation game or Sekia's key stacking games e.g. G. Lascar Devon storytelling games e. G. Dixit or Tales of the Arabian Nights territory games e. G. Go or Revesi tile based games e. G. Carcassonne, Scrabble, Tigris and Euphrates or Eva Train games e. G. Ticket to Ride, Steam or 18th Trivia games e. G. Trivial Pursuit to Player Only themed games e. G. And God or Dos de Mayo and Equal Forces or Hand games e. G. Fox and Geese or Tablet War games ranging from Risk, Diplomacy or Axis and Allies to Attack or Conquest of the Empire Word Games e.g. Scrabble, Boggle, Anagrams, or oh, What's My Word. 2010. Thus we enter common terms. Although many board games have a jargon all their own, there is a generalized terminology to describe concepts applicable to basic game mechanics and attributes common to nearly all board games.